Hi everyone, in today's video we'll take a look at how you can install Apache Cassandra on a single node environment. Uh, keep in mind that um, as a single node it's possibly useful only from a development standpoint. Um, so of course in a production environment uh, the settings, the configurations are going to be different. Um, however, in this particular case we are just uh, creating a simple uh, Cassandra environment to help us learn Cassandra and do some basic development on a Cassandra server. Uh, so the steps are fairly basic, um, so four key steps if you will, uh, or rather three. Uh, so as a prerequisite, uh, you need to make sure that Java is running on your machine. Uh, it's uh, installation of Java is not something that I'm covering in this demo. Hopefully that's uh, fairly straightforward or you can find other resources online to help you with that. Um, step two is to download and extract uh, Cassandra uh, to a folder of your choice. Uh, keep in mind in the video I'm using a tar file, so not using uh, or not installing uh, Cassandra through apt-get for example. Um, then step three is um, we need to update our bash rc file, basically set Cassandra home, uh, the environment variable and uh, set it the binary files in, in the path. Uh, so again, this is an optional step, uh, but uh, highly recommend that you do so. It'll help us in our future videos and uh, uh, as a best practice in general. And then finally, we'll uh, run Cassandra the service and uh, we'll verify if everything's okay and we'll go through some quick examples to uh, set up some data and do some basic queries. So that's uh, basically the objective for the video today. So first off, let's make sure that you have Java installed. So step one, as you may remember, is to install Java. Uh, so if you have uh, VRS, VRSI version, uh, so just uh, double check that you have Java already running. Uh, so if you don't have Java running, uh, then you'll need to go ahead and install Java. In my case, uh, I've already got Java on my machine. So we can head to step number two, which is uh, download and extract uh, Cassandra. So I've downloaded uh, Cassandra already on my machine. So I've got version 3.3. And uh, what you can do is um, download the latest version or the version of your choice and extract it to a uh, folder of uh, your preference. Um, again, I've done that in advance. So I've uh, extracted it to my home folder. And um, that that's all right in my case, but of course, if you are doing it in a production environment, you need to make sure um, of um, uh, a common folder or the user uh, for which you're uh, creating the setup for. So again, this should be fine. Uh, next step is to update the bash rc file. So let's use gedit, gedit bash rc. Make sure that you're uh, in the home folder at the root level and um, here yeah, I've already uh, set that uh, in advance, so I've uh, I've uh, set the two variables that's Cassandra home and um, exported the path already. So that's oops, uh, that's here in bash rc file. Uh, I scroll down towards the end and add these two lines at the bottom here. So that's pretty much it. Once you've uh, updated bash rc, make sure that you run bash rc so that all the updates are taken into effect from within the session. Otherwise, you'll have to restart your machine uh, in order to do that. So make sure you run this command. So that's basically it. Uh, we should be good to go. So that's, uh, that's the last of the setup. And now we need to check if uh, Cassandra is um, running OK. So uh, since it's already in the path, uh, you can run this command from anywhere. Cassandra, uh, let's use the uh, dash F option that basically runs Cassandra in the foreground. It's uh, it's easier when you run it in the foreground, um, particularly when you're in a development environment so that uh, you can easily um, uh, stop the uh, service and run it again. It uh, becomes easier from a developer workflow standpoint. Um, so let's uh, give that a uh, few seconds for it to start. And uh, once it completes, um, we'll, we'll open the Cassandra query language shell, the CQL shell, and run some basic commands to, um, to see if Cassandra is installed OK and uh, you know, run some quick queries against it. 
Um, now the examples itself, um, um, I haven't written these examples from scratch. I've um, basically copy pasted from uh, Planet Cassandra, uh, one of the sites. So it's uh, it's again a, a very simple uh, set of uh, commands here or simple demo and, uh, scenarios. All right, so looking at um, the service here, it looks like everything started. So we should be good to uh, run CQL uh, shell. So let me open a different terminal window here and CQL SH. If uh, you didn't uh, run the service, um, it wouldn't uh, let you open the shell. So it's a good sign that um, it's all wired up and it's uh, good to go. Uh, if it's the first time you're running Cassandra, uh, type in help and you should see uh, uh, the most uh, useful commands here. Um, uh, again, it, uh, you'll find that if you come from a MySQL background or a, a database background, a lot of the commands might seem similar. So um, it does borrow heavily from um, MySQL-like syntax. So you should be right at home if you have a database background. Um, so again, let's dive into some examples. So a uh, few things that um, we'll have to note when it comes to terminology is uh, um, the data in case of Cassandra is uh, stored in what's referred to as a key space. Um, I think of it somewhat similar to a database uh, concept. Um, not exactly, but it's uh, the closest that you could relate it to. And then there's uh, within key spaces, you have what are referred to as tables. So uh, tables is uh, very similar to a table within a database environment. Um, so to see if you already have any um, key spaces, unlikely because you have, you have just installed it, but uh, just if you're curious, so you could show, uh, describe uh, key spaces, key spaces. And uh, here it shows you some of the out of the box. Uh, all these are the out of the box key spaces that you get, so it hasn't been created. So no new key spaces there. So let's uh, create our first one. So um, I'll probably go through the details of this in a different video, but uh, anytime you're creating a key space, um, the, the minimum you have to set is uh, the replication factor, uh, what, um, what strategy you're using for replication, whether it's a simple strategy, network topology, and um, the replication factor itself. So let's paste that there. Now we've uh, just created uh, a new key space. So if we go back and describe key space, uh, sure enough, we have our demo um, key space. So let's use that. And uh, describe tables, tables. And uh, we don't have any tables. So let's uh, create our first table here. So let's paste that there. So again, the syntax is uh, very similar to um, a relational database kind of um, a schema definition. Uh, so here we have um, a number of uh, columns here. So uh, text has in string and integer and uh, the primary key in this particular case is uh, based on the last name. And let's insert some values. So again, this um, shouldn't be too complicated, particularly if you're coming in from a MySQL background. Um, I'm, I'm going through this fairly quickly, but if you want to pause the video and look at the syntax, um, that's fine. So we have just uh, inserted some columns there and we can run some simple queries. So select star from demo, uh, table from table, no, sorry, insert into users. Did I select that? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, um, users, apologies. Select star from users was the uh, name of the table. Um, sure enough, we have uh, inserted uh, three uh, entities here and you can actually see the three here. Uh, we can also run some uh, simple commands like um, do filter and basically run some where conditions here. So in, uh, if you remember, we set the primary key to last name so we can run a where clause uh, within our query. So as you can see, uh, fairly straightforward. Um, so, so far what we've done is um, installed um, Cassandra, uh, did some very basic configuration and run some simple tests to uh, see that it's all working and all wired up. In future videos, uh, we'll explore more around uh, Cassandra and do some more advanced queries and uh, more advanced topics around Cassandra. 
So if you like this video and would like to see more, uh, do subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.